I've travelled to Huila in South Colombia in search of the mountain tapir with the Mountain Tapir Forever project. This is the smallest of the four species of tapir and it's the only one which is adapted to mountain environments. This list is endangered by the IUCN Red List and it's estimated that there are less than 2,000 individuals of this species in the wild in Colombia. That's why it's critical that we work towards their conservation. Today we went into the forest and installed a camera trap at a salt lick nearby. Tomorrow we're going to return to that salt lick and see if we can record any photos. This forest is located in a biological corridor between the Parase and the Cueva de los Cuacheros National Park in the Colombian Massif. To assess the functional connectivity of the biological corridor, tapir populations are monitored to determine whether there's any movement between the national parks. This currently requires camera traps and heavy involvement by the local community. Our main cameraman for this film is also the director of the project. And I just wanted to ask him, Sergio, what do you think the main objective of the Mountain Tapir Forever project is? Well, uh, the Mountain Tapir Forever project is uh, mainly focused on working with uh, local communities. So we want to work with them because we consider it important to first um, make them increase their or improve their living standards. So in this case, if they feel that mountain tapir is important for, for them, they will consider to conserve them. So for that reason, we mainly work with the uh, communities and make education with local schools. But we also include, of course, research. So research is a good complement for our project and is an, an, a need. So in this case, we are working today with a, a local guide who is uh, helping us to improve the route we, where we, uh, we use for going to the places like the Salt Lake where we install our camera trap to monitor mountain temperature. So uh, this is important. So in this case also we are in a place uh, where we have this house which is uh, abandoned and the idea is to improve it and use it as a point where researchers can stop here and be near to the areas where the mountain tapirs uh, live and they can monitor them in an easier way. The people in these rural communities often rely on traditional lifestyles, particularly using forest products like this timber and pastures like the one behind me, which contain livestock including cattle and poultry. These kind of lifestyles bring them into conflict with the mountain tapir, which also relies on the forest. Our project aims to reduce this conflict by encouraging local communities to live more sustainable lives through adopting more environmentally friendly strategies. We've been lucky enough to have been allowed by Don Juan and his family to stay in this house here, which is the last house before you get to the forest which houses the mountain tapir. Mountain tapir numbers were declining due to overhunting, but once the local community became aware of this, they became increasingly engaged in the problem and allowed researchers to stay at places like this and acted as guides to help them to place camera traps so that we'd be better able to understand the population of the mountain tapir in the area. I sat down with Jon Freddy to discuss why he thinks mountain tapirs are important. So, why do you think mountain tapirs deserve our conservation attention? Pues los tapires merecen ser, son animales que no atacan a la gente, son que viven en la, en la montaña, más que todo perder en la reserva, no hacen daños, no atacan a la gente y sí, y hacen ver, el, son los que alegran el paisaje. Yes. I'm with Don Juan, who has been our guide for this expedition. Could you kindly let us stay at his house? Don Juan, why do you think the conservation of the mountain tapir is important for local community? Pues la, la conservación nosotros la tenemos como un, una historia y un tesoro de oro como para nosotros. En el conservar la zona boscosa, las, las reservas naturales, es, es darle vida a la, a la generación de, hacia el futuro. Entonces, de vista de eso, nosotros nos estamos educando en conservar lo que es la flora y la fauna, todo, los bosques, las montañas. Entonces nosotros estamos trabajando lo que, lo que es de lo que se ha talado antes, más no lo que está 
ya antiguo. Ese, esa es la idea de nosotros seguir conservando. ¿A través de qué? De que hacia el futuro de pronto nuestra generación tenga la posibilidad de tener unas aguas suficientes. Porque eh, con, hacia, como vamos, la escasez de agua va a ser muy, muy tenaz hacia el futuro. Y además con las, con, con las construcciones de las, de las represas de Betania que están haciendo, pues eso se va a subir una temperatura, mejor dicho, que, que nos va a tocar buscar esta zona nosotros como propietarios para podernos proteger de, de los calores y tener agua para conservar nuestra vida de nuestros hijos. Gracias. So here we can find two places where we can see tapir trackways as shown by the three toes here. Tapirs are unique among mammals because they have four toes on their front feet and three toes on their back feet and this configuration means that they don't get stuck in the mud. Mountain tapirs create these paths and with their specialised limb morphology, they have absolutely no problem getting down. For tapir researchers in only rubber boots, it's a different story. Without guides like Don Juan, clearing the route for us. It's already difficult terrain, be even harder to access. We installed the camera trap here at this salt lick. Salt licks like these are really important for herbivores, including tapirs, because they contain the ions that aren't available in their diets. This is why at this project, we use natural salt licks like this to record species, especially the mountain tapir. This acts as a natural bait and so that we don't have to interfere with the environment, but it's also an efficient way of capturing this species. We're going to install this camera trap here at the salt lake. So I'm just going to show you how we do it. We find a tree facing the middle of the salt lake where the two pier trails can merge. And we tie it to that tree. Then we adjust the settings so that they're on what we want. And we turn it on. Hopefully when we come back, there'll be some pictures of it. Our camera trap was only at this location for 24 hours, and yet even in that short time frame, we recorded the presence of several individual mountain tapirs. This shows us that the salt licks are a viable way of monitoring the tapir populations. This will allow us to track this ecologically important species in a non-invasive way. Especially exciting was the fact that we recorded the presence of a juvenile tapir alongside its mother, demonstrating that tapirs are breeding in this region. These are fantastic results for tapir conservation and for the health of this region more generally, but they wouldn't have been possible without the engagement of the local community. <laughs>